Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hope everybody's having a great day. Uh, I'm not going to be long. I'm actually preparing for a segment I'm doing on a new podcast called I Change the Narrative. Uh, if you guys aren't doing too much uh, around noon Central Standard Time, uh, I'm going to leave a link in the description box. Drop in. We're going to be discussing uh, generational wealth. Um, so if you get a chance, drop in. Uh, also, if you seen the description box you know that we are in the middle of a fundraiser for the work we do at the odyssey project uh the work is intensive uh the need is consistent uh consistent um and extensive and so we're asking you to support the work we do if you know if you've been around then you know what we've been doing for over three decades you know what we've been doing uh in so many different areas uh so again show some love, show some support. Uh, what I want to talk to you about is something that I saw one of my colleagues, Dr. Uh, Michael Blanchard. Uh, and yes, we are coming back with the teachers. There's just a lot between the two of us and uh, everything that's been going on. We have both uh, been pressed to the uh, mad on so much that's going on in our individual lives that we needed to step back for a while and get some things done. Uh, but we are definitely coming back and coming back strong. Uh, so stay tuned. It won't be long. Um, but anyway, uh, he posted something. Uh, it was a qu quote summarized by him but from uh, Jason Black. But it was basically that there will be no black progress until we as a people and I'm definitely uh, paraphrasing, to we as a people learn to appreciate intellect. And when, when, when I say intellect, I'm not talking about necessary uh, academic achievement and degrees. I'm not talking about uh, well-spoken words. I'm talking about the great minds that have the skill and the mental power, creativity and imagination to create solutions to the enigmatic, enigmatic issues we face on an ongoing basis. One of the things that I have been challenged to do uh, since before I was an adult was to look at what we were going through as a people and to see if there were ways to overcome it. Um, and while I have written many big books and articles and I've lectured and, and everything else on all of the uh, mechanisms, methodologies, and machinations that are set up to keep black people at bay and uh, the white wealthy elite in power. I have also equally submitted uh, solutions and strategies and plans and ideas. Uh, and I think that's what we have to do. One of the portions uh, or uh, divisions of the Odyssey Project is a think tank. It is the gathering together of minds to come up with solutions and there are solutions uh we can't travel their path and play their rules and uh be compliant in um their system and expect to win the system was not designed for us to win so when you become compliant within a system that's designed to keep you in last place you actually contribute to being in last place even when you talk about wealth the way we spend our money 
it's through the it's through the minds and the lens of consumerism. We are all about buying stuff. That's how we uh, escape our realities. That's how we prove we have arrived. That's how we put ourselves above our other brothers is look what I got. Look what I can afford. Look what I bought. And rarely is our money going into assets. It's going into depreciating um, liabilities that ultimately cost us in the long run. And so uh, I have often said that we are the only people in history of man in the history of mankind that literally uh, is fi financing our own demise solely by the way we spend money. And there are solutions to that. There are minds outside of myself who have come up with ways to do that. Dr. Claude Anderson has given his entire life to trying to teach us that there has to be a shift in our thinking, a shift in our behavior, a shift in the way that we manage and move with our money. Um, there is so much to learn about finance. I launched, uh, I created the Legacy Wealth Academy, what, seven, eight years ago. And it was just for people who wanted to come in and learn. And, but I created an online course, one, if not the most comprehensive course in wealth building, uh, generational wealth building. Uh, it's an online course. It's probably the equivalent of a master's. And it is powerful. Um, I've learned so much interviewing the players who basically uh make the rules these are the guys who have set the standard uh and i've either interviewed them or got a hold to uh vital information that they've shared with other people and used it to create this course uh despite the fact that i've had a pretty nice run of it in life i have come nowhere close to what my goals are and what i'm capable of and i've learned so much over the last seven eight years uh as i move towards my own goals I decided, man, again, which is always my M.O., I want my people to get this. The problem is my people aren't designed to consume it, designed to have a desire or passion for it, designed or programmed to want to take hold of it. And this is just in one area. This is the area that plays a major role, though, because if we can close the wealth gap, if we can start to exhibit economic power, then we can also... Uh, execute economic sanction. When we're operating and we have economic power, then we can utilize that power to create situations for ourselves. We're not begging someone to do something for us. We're not thinking that all we have to do is vote for you. When we, when we vote for you, somebody else comes along and lines your pocket and you do what's in their interest despite the fact that they may, may not have even voted for you. But uh, I don't want to get too deeply into politics, but what I, w I do want to talk about is the need for appreciation of black intellect, the need for appreciation of the mind. People come to me all the time and say, how is it you are sharing the level of information you're sharing on your, on your channels and your books and everything else, and your subscribership is what it is? You know, there was one time where subscribership was banging and Google got me. Well, YouTube, Google, same thing. Google owns YouTube. They got me. And started over and it never picked back up again. And the answer to the question is what we place emphasis and priority on. Blacks have been programmed for sensationalism. Blacks have been programmed for entertainment. Blacks have been programmed to be triggered. If it doesn't trigger you, if it doesn't entertain you, if it's not sensational, you do not gravitate for, toward it. You are not looking for, and I'm not talking, when I say you, I'm not necessarily talking about the people. I'm talking about us as a collective. I don't separate myself from those who I feel aren't thinking like me. If I'm going to love my people, I'm going to love my people. And unfortunately, that means a great deal of people who simply don't have the priorities I have or don't have the insight I have or don't have the desires I have because either they don't know better or they don't care. But at the same time, in order for us to have power, we've got to collectively come together and emphasize the importance of black intellect. Again, this is an emphasis on necessarily people who are thriving in the world of academics. 
maybe you do have a bachelor's, a master's, or a doctorate, and maybe you are able to use that, and that's great. But there are some minds that can just simply evaluate situations and through creativity come up with new ideas, new strategies, new plans. We need to have these minds centered. I have said before, there aren't enough black think tanks. You have the Harvest Institute, Dr. Clark Anderson. You have the Odyssey Project. Um, um, there may be two or three others. Um, and I'm being generous. They have over 1,300 think tanks that help them look at every area, every aspect, every dynamic and element uh, that is controls society, controls politics, controls the global economy and everything else that allows them to make sure that they maintain the control and the leverage they have and that they keep those that they are concerned about at bay. And how are we going to ever be able to create strategies and agendas when we can't even appreciate the minds who are capable of doing it and get behind the minds who are capable of doing it and then challenge the next generation to open up their imagination and their mind and, and their creativity to create strategies. I also created the blueprint uh, for black empowerment. Uh, I entitled the blueprint 1.0 because my thing is I don't know everything. Uh, I don't claim to know everything, but the things I do know are substantial in relation to the average person. Relatively speaking, I know a lot, but I don't know everything. So when I've created the blueprint uh, for black empowerment, I put 1.0 because I wanted that to be a 1.5 or 2.0 and on down the line as more minds came in and more minds. And the thing is, there are minds out there, but the problem is the coming together of the minds isn't what's rewarded. It's the grandstanding that gets rewarded. So uh, a lot of people have decided instead of being about uh, producing substantial uh, solutions, I'm going to go out and show just how smart I am. Uh, I'm going to present it in a way, in a production that is appealing to my people. It won't really empower them. It re won't really give them uh, what they need. It won't really challenge them. It won't really call them on their BS. But what it will do is it will lie in my pockets. And so that's a problem. Until we are able to appreciate intellect that can solve problems. Because that's where power is. Power is in the ability to solve your own problems. When you're able to solve your own problems, you're never at a, uh, the mercy of someone else. You're never sitting around waiting on somebody to fix your situation. You're engaged in developing a solution, creating a solution, discovering a solution. And that's the thing that we are lacking in right now is an appreciation for intellect, appreciation for mind power, appreciation for people who are literally committed to making things happen in this world. We are so caught up on the superficial things, the things that have no intrinsic value and no weight and no gravity in developing power. We talk power and liberation. We talk black progress. But when you look at our behavior, it's not conducive to achieving the power and the liberation and the progress that we talk about. We're not protecting our kids. We're not properly developing our kids. We're not properly socializing our kids. We don't insulate them against all the things that are coming at them that are causing the identity crisis that is influencing the behavior that we so easily complain and whine about. That's on us. We aren't using proper developmental strategies. We are trusting the very system that is destroying us to educate our children, and we don't even see a problem with it. Why? Because we haven't given any critical thought or uh, uh, analysis or assessment to how things are moving in the world. We're just rolling along. Hey, this is how it's always been done. This is what you're supposed to do. So this is it. You cannot be compliant to a system that is working to destroy you and develop power. Uh, I remember hearing uh, Dr. Umar Johnson say probably about eight years ago that white supremacy is absolutely useless or powerless without black compliance. And it is. We keep playing the game. We keep going in and doing things the way it's supposed to. Matter of fact, let the system start getting shook. Let, let the political structure as we know it start to get shaky and what we are used to seeing as this or that shift. And we immediately start talking about it. We start 
you know, talking about how hollow, oh my God, what's go what's happening, what's going, what is the world coming to, all this stuff. And you don't realize that maybe for you to have the things that you say you want as far as liberation and power, the very system that is holding holding you back will may 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 have to be uh at the very less at the very least rebuilt. Maybe it won't even exist the way it exists now. But that means you have to be willing to go to, through change. You have to have enough uh, belief in yourself, enough confidence in your capacity to operate outside of a system that has only uh, held you back in the first place. But you've got to have the, the confidence and the ability, number one, of your own mind, but also an appreciation for those who have invested their minds and their thoughts, their ideas, their cre creativity and imagination to creating solutions that actually work. One of the first things that I do when I see something that's happening in the black community or someone does in the black community or someone does to someone in the black community or a, a, a current reality, whether it's poverty, whether it's miseducation, whether it's incarceration, whether it's gentrification, whatever it is. My first thing is why? Next question is how? The next question is what's the response and the solution? Why is it happening? How is it happening? And what do you do about it? Sitting up with a poster, marching up and down the street, setting shit on fire doesn't change anything. All that amounts to is a collective temper tantrum. If you do not have economic power through which you can apply economic sanction and consequences to behavior that you do not find to operate in your best interest, all, all, all a, a, a march or a riot or a protest is, is a collective temper tantrum. You're just telling everybody you're mad. If you don't have anything that you can do after that, that it, it means nothing. They'll eventually get tired and they'll go home. And eventually that's what happens because anger isn't the force that's going to move us. It's planning. It's agendas. It's blueprints. It's a protocol list of things that you just simply do when something happens. You don't even have to think about it because it's a part of the protocols. You, you, you build a protocol list. Hey, when this happens, this is what we do. Then we follow up with this. Then we, I mean, everything has a response already ironed out. So you're not operating off of emotion. You're operating off of what's set in line strategically for you to get the best results. We don't do this. And because we don't do this, we constantly end up in last place. What a protest is meant to do is serve as a precursor and a warning of something to follow. So what happens is when you have the ability to apply economic sanction, your protest says, if you don't, we're angry. And if you don't fix it, we're about to shut this down. We're about to stop buying here. We're about to stop supporting this. We're about to take our money out of here and put it here. Now they're listening. Now, and then the th then what happens is when you start to develop that mindset, something else happens. You start to realize a lot of the things that we're doing over here, we don't even need to be doing over here anyway. So let's take our money anyway and put it over here. Let's take our money and do it this way. It doesn't mean we don't operate because what we want, we want businesses in their economy. We want them to buy from us, but we want to be very careful about what we buy from them because every time we buy from them, we finance their system we finance their plan we finance their agenda now there are certain things we don't own we don't control so we are going to have to do it until we can get to where we own a great deal of all of the essential elements and components that allow us to survive certain things we have to get over there but a bunch of stuff we're buying from them we don't need it's not essential it's it's actually a luxury and we are blowing massive amounts of capital and resources into them. That's why they don't mind giving athletes these multi-million dollar contracts because the vast majority of it comes right back into their economy. They're not concerned about these athletes and in, in these six high six figure people and in, in seven figure people pouring back into programs that will empower the next generation they're living their life. They're balling out of control. They're buying all the stuff they always wish they can buy. And I get it. But if you're going to have a collective 
progressive movement, there has to be a plan. There has to be a level of commitment and sacrifice that says, this is what I'm going to do. The problem is we don't do that. We don't get behind the mind. We don't get behind the people who are invested in doing the things that are necessary. And if we don't develop an appreciation for intellect, for true mind power, and again, this isn't about how many degrees on the wall. This is about how a person can use this to solve a problem. And if we don't really truly ever get to a point to where we appreciate that, we stand behind it, we work behind it, we back it, we won't experience progress. Matter of fact, we will continue the trend that we're on that everybody pretends isn't happening because we can go out and buy this and buy that and make it look like the wealth gap is widening. The socioeconomic reality for blacks is that things are getting worse for us. We are seeing a racial wealth gap widen, which means the power structure is becoming more imbalanced for us. And we are immersing ourselves in the illusion that we're doing okay. Let me explain something to you that I'm going. Um, they gas us up with this $1.4 trillion in annual spending power. It's in the wording. you got to pay attention to the wording and the use of semantics to play with your mind. The $1.4 trillion in spending power is not $1.4 trillion in wealth. What you got to understand is in America, we'll, we're operating under what we would call a debt-based economy, meaning that the financial currency in this country isn't backed by anything of value. It's not on a gold standard. It's not on oil or minerals or any other thing. It's simply a fiat currency. And the only thing that keeps it going is the consumerism within the country that causes people to spend more money than they have. So when we talk about buying power, what we have to understand is the vast majority of that buying power isn't held assets, it's credit. And credit becomes debt when it's utilized. So in essence, that $1.4 trillion is more about potential debt than it is truly wealth. It also has to be uh, it also has to be uh, viewed in the light of the fact that 1.4 trillion sounds like a lot of money till you realize we have a hundred and something trillion dollar economy. Still less than one percent of the total movement and power and money play in this country. But it is the most concentrated consumer uh, engagement. We own less and spend more per what we own than any other group. Can't win that way. Can't win that way. So I just had to stop in and share that, man. We have to have a clear plan. We've got to have a greater appreciation for thought and a greater appreciation for true intellect uh, which is problem-solving mental power. And we need to get behind it and we need to operate and act as if we are trying to empower ourselves and move towards, move progressively towards uh, true liberation and the freeing of ourselves from a system that is literally strangling us. I cannot stress that enough. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Again, uh, about an hour, less than an hour and a half, I will be on uh, being interviewed by I Changed the Narrative uh, podcast. Um, next week, I'm going to be speaking uh, live here in Houston. Uh, at a, I'll be conducting a workshop. So it's not just speaking. I'll be conducting a workshop on epi epigenetics and psychology and adverse childhood experiences, the influences of environment and stress on our genetic performance, our actual health outcomes, uh, the behavior of our kids, the long-term outcome of our kids, uh, how it all plays in. We're talking mass incarceration. We're talking miseducation. We're talking a bunch of different things and how all of those things play a role. I want um, 
to really be an impact because this is actually a program that's being sponsored by the Harris County uh, Sheriff's Department. Um, it's a shame that we have to go that route to get to and be able to get it done. Because uh, obviously when you do that, we're not just talking about black kids. We're talking about inner city and the less fortunate and, and all that. And don't get me wrong. I have no problem working with anybody that needs help. But I'm about taking care of family first. I'm about taking care of things first. But I don't get to control it when I don't control the system. The system is not going to sit up and say for black kids. It's just simply not going to do it. It's the one thing it won't do. But every other group has their own programs, has their, have their own uh, things in place to take care. Asians don't, aren't asking them to do it for them. Arabs aren't asking them to do it for them. They're lumping us and Latinos in together because uh, we're sitting up and we're the most devastated by this phenomenon and we are the least active in trying to resolve our issues. Again, I've been talking about this for years. This isn't new. I've lectured on this internationally. I've lectured on epigenetics and cancer. Uh, there's so much that we don't understand about what we're experiencing and the outcomes we're experiencing in life. And we are just moving along and we're taking whatever they're telling us as the reasons for whatever it is we're going through. And the truth of the matter is there are things that we can do about it outside of what we're being told, but we're not being told why. Because what's important to us isn't necessarily important to them. You got to understand that there is a huge push for uh, population control, the reduction of the population. I don't want to get into it, but you've got to understand that things happen for a reason and everybody doesn't have your moral compass. So you've got to protect yourself. Look, on that note, I'm going to get out of here. Get, uh, continue preparing. Um, if you believe in the work we're doing at the Odyssey Project, look in the description box and give. There are several ways you can give. Cash app organization or a GoFundMe page. I'm not crazy about the GoFundMe page simply because of the high processing fee. Uh, but some people are more comfortable with that. So uh, there are three ways to give. Uh, show some love. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable night.